Welcome back to another tutorial. Tonight I'm going to talk about importing a track. Uh, before we click on that, we want to make sure that we've got the right spline chosen. We're going to bring it in as busier. And that we've got the right cross section. We'll stick with the tarmac dart. We click on import track. And I've got a few examples here. Um, you, these two are CSV files and you can open those up in Excel or a text editor if you like and have a look at the contents of that. This one here is a KMZ file um, and that's actually a zipped up KML file. A KML file is something that we can produce in Google uh, Earth and I'll show you that a little bit later on. For now we'll open up this track and it's fairly lengthy. It didn't have too many points inside it, it was a fairly small file, but it is uh, 18 kilometers and some of it's falling outside the, the bounds as we'll see in a moment. There it is, all around. Um, we notice we got this happening, uh, of course we want to um, make sure that our triangles on our ground are not um, hugely large, so as we do smaller ones, those sort of things disappear. Um, so that's looking better. You'd w want to make smaller triangles all the way around your circuit, of course. Um, I'm not going to do that for the purpose of discussion here. Um, this GPS was recorded from somebody driving around in a, a car and um, they did loop back on themselves at points, so that, that's also brought in, so you'll need to fix that up manually. But you'll notice here I'm tabbing through the different tracks. It actually splits it up into uh, smaller chunks and those uh, the length of the chunk is approximately determined by that value there the warning length and um, It's good to have it in smaller chunks because I'll just turn wireframe off there um, When we um, when we do Manipulate these tracks. It'll be faster when we've got it all in uh, one small uh, or smaller tracks rather than in one large long piece um, and also for when you export out into games games certainly will appreciate that you've um, uh, split it up instead of rendering the whole track all the time okay this time we're going to bring it in the mid Ohio uh, XYZ and uh, it's got its coordinates using the XYZ uh, values in RTV whereas Ravensburg um, has it in GPS longitude, latitude and height. Um, this one is a larger file but it actually produces a smaller track because all the points in here were actually very close to each other. So this is um, three and a half thousand meters in length and it brings it in fairly quickly. We don't bring in all the points in our RTB, it's actually got a little bit of smarts in there that you actually get um, reduces the, the number of points and places these um, nodes and the control points fairly uh, smartly in order to produce the same shape track. Um, you notice though that the height of the track is um, above the, the ground and so if you were to bring this track in and you had the coordinates, the longitude and latitude coordinates already from the venue that you've brought in uh, the the map will the the track will lay over the terrain um, very nicely. We'll have a look at that with Bathurst. Okay, now we've loaded up Google Earth Pro. Let's uh, search for Bathurst, New South Wales, and it'll slowly zoom in. You can actually change the the zoom speed if you don't like that dramatic slow mo way it does. And we'll just look down below Bathurst for Mount Panorama. Now we want to create a path, add path. Doesn't matter what you call it, doesn't matter what measurements you use, It'll. Um, this is really for display only. Um, but it does matter that you want to get your path in the center of the track. And I've begun here, you, you may want to begin further back where the start finish line is, doesn't really matter. This is where the start of the first track will be in RTB and just plot the points along and when you cut to corners 
I'll just do a little bit more. Um, so I use the arrow keys on the keyboard to, to slide along rather than trying to change the view um, using the other mouse buttons. And we just click every now and again on the points. Don't click and drag because you end up bringing in a whole lot of points. You can press delete to go back and delete the previous ones. Um, and if you get one wrong, you can adjust it like this. But just be careful because when you click the next point, it actually uses whatever you had before as the basis of the uh, next thing. So go back and click your end and then start clicking again. Go all the way around your track. I'm going to take a shortcut and we'll come back down here. And we want the last point to almost touch, almost join up. And RTB will actually look at those, see that they're close together and actually join them into to one piece. Um, once you're happy with the, the layout, um, say OK, and then you simply save place as and save the file off um, to somewhere on your hard drive. So I've loaded in Mount Panorama into RTB. Uh, let me just zoom back out there so you can see the whole racetrack. And um, we'll load in the track now that we would have saved earlier or oops, uh, the, the one that I've prepared earlier Bathurst KMZ file so the KMZ file is actually a zip file contains a KML file the KML file is an XML format file and coming out of Google Earth it has no height data so RTB as soon as you get to this point will have already gained that height data from the API that you would have had the Google API in this case and we'll click OK and it gets created. But the first thing you're going to notice is that it's popped up above the ground. Why is that? Um, well, each of these nodes in the track, if we look at them, has actually been gathered from the Google API, but so has the terrain. So why the difference? Well, if we look at the terrain here, and we look at the triangles, we can see that uh, each of those points would be accurate according to Google anyway, um, but it differs from the track because the terrain actually changes quite a bit here and it actually stays high and then drops off quickly down to this point. So as we give the terrain more detail here, I'll just zoom out so we can do a whole section all at once, you'll notice that the terrain will pop up and match the road. So the road actually stayed in place if we look at the triangles now, I've put a lot more detail into this and so that you get the terrain now matching the road. Um, one extra feature that I've got um, that I've added uh, recently is the uh, good old drive mode. So if you want to drive along your track, you just press the letter D and it's going to drive along that track. Down the dips we go. Uh, press it again and you get the fly mode. Use your your right mouse button and you can look around while flying about. Press D or escape again and it exits out. So I thought for a bit of fun I'd put a, a little bit of agitation down and, and see what it looks like and, and see what it plays like. Um, I've basically used a, a rough guide where the trees are and laid a whole bunch of trees down. Uh, not the prettiest sort of result, but um, yeah, it was done in about 10 minutes. So uh, yeah, let's uh, have a little drive and uh, see what it looks like. So please forgive my keyboard driving as I blast off down the track here. Uh, just a quick look at how it looks in game instead of Corsa. And uh, yeah, pretty good uh, frame rates. And, uh, Really smooth. Uh, the grass and trees were added fairly hastily, so uh, some of the trees ended up in weird spots. And uh, here we can see the top of Mount Panorama. We can see off into the distance. And uh, as we come down those dips.
but it wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you're staying safe and I'll have this beater out soon. <laughs>